Right, I promised you dream analysis and we have a man to help us exactly with that. Ian Wallace, how are you tonight? I'm very good, Cass. How are you? Yeah, brilliant. And it's lovely to have you join us. Thank you so much for taking some time out and staying up a bit late for us. We appreciate it. Now, sir, when it comes to analysing dreams, dreams can be with those funny things where people tell them to you and you're just not that interested. So how is it that you got involved with interpreting them? Well, that's the thing, Cass. People say that they're not interested. I'm absolutely fascinated by dreams. But the thing when someone starts telling you a dream, usually what happens is you start thinking about your own dreams <laughs> and you go off into your own little dream world. So it's not so much you're not interested in other people's dreams, it's that you don't pay attention to your own dreams. And that's usually where the tension or frustration comes from. Right, now I have, I because obviously knowing we were talking to you, I had a little think about my dreams and wondered if there was a scenario I could tell you about. But I wanted to ask you, about the landscape of my dreams, okay? Uh-huh. This is really weird, and it's it's been something in my head for ages. And I and I know it's not because I saw Inception and I suddenly went, that's it, my, my dreams are exactly like that, because they're not, but they are. It was quite cleverly done, I don't know, I'd love your opinion on it, but uh, very long story short, Ian, with my dreams, I tend to have a set backdrop that will manifest it man- always manifests into one of these similar one or two or three backdrops i've got and one is a is a um it I, I won't go into the other the other two but there's one is a field and it's the same field and at first it feels like you're on the school like my old school pitch and then eventually it turns into the same field like a paddock like a farm paddock and i don't know what it represents and i don't think i've ever been there but my head represents outside space in the same space every time why does that happen ian that's a really interesting thing kath so when we dream about a landscape we're usually dreaming about some set of feelings or emotions that we have so people think that dreams happen to them but the reverse is true kath we actually happen to dreams so you create everything in the dream and you create that school pitch turning into a paddock into that field and language is also really important in dreams as well a lot of the idioms and phrases that we use in waking life those are reflected in the dreams that we create every night too So when you're dreaming about a field, it's probably your field of expertise or your field of experience or your field of knowledge in waking life. And because it's a school pitch, schools are all about how you learn things and how you judge your wisdom and experience. So this space starts off as something as you judging your experience and examining yourself and examining what you know. And then you start to realize that you've built up a large field of knowledge in your life and you're just looking through that. So what you're telling yourself when you create that dream is to really attend to your field of experience and how you can actually use that in your waking life. Ian, you're fascinating. So listen, everyone else listening, this is The Late Show on BBC London 94.9. You have 30 minutes to access Ian's extreme knowledge of, of interpretation of dreams as a professional dream psychologist and analyst. He is here at your service. So if you're listening to this and you've had this crazy dream or there's been something about a dream, an element, because not everyone remembers their dreams exactly, but there may be a large element you would like and like someone to interpret on your behalf. If you get if you get calling now, if you give us a call on 020 722 Ian will have a little stab at giving you an idea of what your dream was about. If, you would, if you're a little shy and you want to text in, you can do that too. The text number is 81333. Start your text with the word London. Pop a few details down about your dream, as many details as you can text, and uh, we'll do our best to interpret it. Remember to put London at the front and uh, your name at the back so we can at least tell who we're talking about so yeah if you want to give us a call 020 722 for 2000 now ian another dream i'm gonna hit you with isn't mine uh-huh. but i spent i spent a few uh, a few moments at work cackling about it with a friend of mine uh a friend who shall re- remain nameless had a dream about a work colleague Mm-hmm. And my particular friend, and, and please forgive me, I will not say your name so I don't get into trouble, but my particular friend, a lady, dreamt about a male work colleague. Now, this often happens at times. Male or female dream about a work colleague and you're a bit embarrassed the next day. You feel like they know what you were thinking in your head and you didn't even mean to think it. Your head thought it. 
And uh, But my friend has a particular issue, which is she's very chaste in her dreams. And in this dream, her and this chap were just chatting. And he's really handsome. And she said, he's my dream. I could have just, you know, I could have could have given him a cheeky kiss, but I didn't because I'm really chaste in my dreams. W- what does that all mean? Is that big? And, oh, she's packing a bag. And she's a very organised woman, but she couldn't find the other shoe. And they were on a beach. How does that, how does that treat you, Ian? Do, what, do with that as you wish. OK, so you said when you're introducing uh, me to the listeners there, Kath, that I might have a little stab at something. So with this one, would you like me to have a little stab or give yes, you please. my expert opinion? I do apologise. I didn't mean to belittle your amazing work. <laughs> I meant you, you can't always interpret something from a you know, three-line text that would be able to be a, a tome. You know, that's more of what that was referring to. Yeah, well, quite often I, I interpret quite a lot of clients' dreams on Twitter. So having 140 characters... Oh my word, Ian, then I do apologise. You're yes, just the man be, for this job. Yes, I have to be quite poetic with it. Yeah, so um, this uh, dream um, with a work colleague, well, your work colleague with this handsome man, any time you create a character in a dream, then that character is always representing some quality or some aspect of yourself. So it's really really common that people dream about work colleagues, especially in quite intimate situations. And it's it's the 52nd most common dream that people have is inappropriate intimacy with a work colleague. So when you create this character, your work colleague, then it's not because you want to be close to them or you're a bit shy with them and you'd like to kiss them, but you don't feel it's appropriate. The reason that you do it is that they have some quality that you want to become more intimately aware of in your own self. So they might be really creative and you're potentially very creative or they may be very decisive and you just wish you were a bit more decisive and really choose what you want to do. So anytime you create a work colleague, they're representing some sort of quality. So with your work colleague, this person, this handsome man in her dream, represents something that she wants to be a lot closer to in her own self. And packing a bag is a very common dream as well. And it's usually about fulfilling your potential. So you're trying to organise your stuff and getting things together And usually it is someone who's very, very organised in waking life. And the reason that she's missing a shoe is that she doesn't know the first step that she needs to take to actually realise this unrealised potential inside herself. So in waking life, she has to decide what is the first step she needs to take. Uh, It may be a he or a she, I'm assuming it's a she here. It is a she, yes. (laughs) Uh, The first step that she needs to take to realise this undiscovered potential inside herself. Ian, that is so astute. You are an interesting man. Um, We already have uh, our first, I was going to call him a willing victim, but uh, he's obviously a man in need of your sage opinion, Ian. So if you hang on one second, I'll introduce you to Paul in Kingston. Hiya, Paul. Hiya, how you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Right, what would you like Ian to try and diagnose for you? I keep having a reoccurring dream. It's of a, a, a large, spooky mansion house. Quite appropriate for tonight, really. It um, is. And I, I know all the rooms. I know there's also there's, both, there's secret hatches and doorways. Um, and I, I keep going back to it. the same place in sort of over and over again in weeks and months. Same place again. It's like I've actually lived there before. I know all the areas. It's quite dark. It's quite large. It's a huge, great old mansion house. And um, uh, basically, just know everything about it, and and know my way around it constantly, and just wonder if uh, if you can help me out with what I'm uh, what I'm getting at. Okay, Paul, stay on the line. Paul and Kingston's going to stay with us. Ian, have a little go at that for us. So, you want a little go, Kath, or do you want? the full works well um i want to try and get through as many of these as we can okay, so uh, give, us a, give us a, a nice concise version yeah yes. midway so fundamentally concise so paul anytime we dream about a house you're dreaming about your own self the house is the classic symbol of the self houses have got insides and outsides and so do we we've got inside lives and outside lives so when you dream about a mansion house paul you're actually starting to realize how big your inner life is that you've got this vast life inside that's really full of interesting places, these secret hatches and doorways, and it's full of hidden potential. And that feels a bit spooky to you. You get a bit scared of what you might be able to achieve if you actually started 
looking inside yourself. So the message from your dream, Paul, is not to be worried by your own potential and don't be scared to display your talents or skills or your abilities in waking life. It might feel a wee bit scary, but just step up and do it. And the more you do that, then the more your outer life will start to match this huge inner life that you have. Paul, how do you how do you think? Uh, what do you think of what you've just heard from Ian? Well, it's a lot more promising than I thought, to be honest. Well, what did you think? Well, I, I, yeah, he's fairly up in it. I thought it was just just a, a reoccurring dream. You know, they say sometimes you've uh, been on this earth before. I've got this feeling I'm going to walk into this house one day. But obviously, uh, he, he's found the, uh, the the right meaning for me, which is good. Do, and and song. no, go, Sorry, go please, on. please go ahead, Paul. I've got a song for you, which is Zombie. Oh, <laughs> fantastic, zombie. Am Got I, it. Am I outfit for the party? Yes. Well, everyone's still invited to the Halloween party, so what are you wearing? Big cornflake box and a big axe. Yeah. I'm going to be a serial killer. Oh, you are very, very good. <laughs> Paul in Kingston is a serial killer, and I'm very happy about Thank that, too. Know. Thank you for the analysis. Oh, uh, well, I tell you what, I'm, I th- I'm on my behalf, it was a pleasure. Thanks for letting, you know, for sharing with us. Ian, this is interesting because you, you mentioned earlier about, you know, inappropriate actions with work colleagues is quite a popular dream. What is the most popular dream? The most popular dream, Kath, is being chased. It's absolutely the most popular oh. dream that people have. Okay, and again, you say this, and you're so right. Whenever people talk about dreams, and by the way, Ian is at your service. If you want to try and get some dream analysis from Ian, and now you've had a taste of how good it is, and uh, he can do it concisely. He can go into a tiny bit more detail if you require. Do get calling 020-722-4000 if you're interested. It's 0207-224-2000. I, again, we are... Discussing dreams and, of course, dreams you think are long forgotten, just a few words and you suddenly remember them. I did have this, again, it was very Halloween style, recurring dream. And I I remember because I discussed it with my mum, it was quite worrying to me. Being chased, dark alleyway, um, and it was very vivid. And a chap would... um, A chap was chasing me, a kind of faceless chap with a hoodie was chasing me. And I remember because I was getting stressed, more and more stressed with the dream, and I remember actively thinking... Uh, I think the last time I had the dream, I actively thought, do you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't be scared anymore. Whatever he does to me, I won't feel it. And the hand comes down and I didn't feel it and I woke up. Ian, is that is that just a regular thing? Like, was that me sorting my own dream issue out or my own mind? My subconscious sorted out whatever the problem was? Yeah, that's absolutely it, Kath. So it's the most common dream that people have. And again, just going back to language, just thinking about what the meaning of that dream is, we have this word in our language, pursuit. And a pursuit is being chased, but a pursuit is something that you're really fascinated by or drawn to because you pursue particular personal ambitions. So when you dream that you're being chased by someone, there's something in your waking life where you're actually chasing yourself to do something. There's something that you really want to pursue. And very often it's a a faceless person chasing you because you're trying to identify what that ambition is or what you really want to do and if you don't attend to it in waking life then it usually the volume gets turned up a bit and it will start to turn into a nightmare so what I do with my clients is that I train them in the dream when they're being chased to actually turn around and say to the pursuer who are you and what do you need and usually they get a very very clear answer of what they need to do in waking life to start fulfilling some ambitions. Wow. Okay, so do you know what? I had no idea, but at the time of my life that I was having that dream, that was exactly what it was about, Ian. I am. I feel a little silly now. You make it so simple and so quick. Right, we have another um, caller, stroke victim, um, Dominic's in St Pancras. Hiya, Dominic. Good morning. Thank you so much for giving us a call. Um, Ian is at your disposal. Share your dream. Okay, um, hello, Ian. Hi, Dominic, how are you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Right, all day today, this dream that I had last night has been on my mind, and I don't know where it from, so as you're on the radio tonight, it's just perfect. So, what it was, um, me, my wife and I lost uh, my wife's father three years ago, and it's the closest person we've actually lost um, in our lives. We've been together since we were 15. And last night, I had a very vivid dream that 
um, he was, we, me and my wife, we got a call saying, uh, Pops is here, he, he's back, um, not for long, so come round. When we turned up, me, my wife and I, we turned up at the house, he was there, he was lying down in the bed, um, like he was when he passed, but he was full of life, as in smiling, he couldn't talk, but his eyes was jet black almost like really scary it didn't scare me i was so happy to see him sat down held his hands and was asking him questions has he been and silly stuff like that in my dream but we was aware that we couldn't let the kids in to see him because he looked quite scary that was basically it but it's been on my mind all day as soon as i woke up i said it to my wife i said i've had the strangest dream oh dominic it does sound actually a little upsetting no, but it wasn't, because when I was there, he, he had a big smile on his face. He was so pleased to see me. Okay. And he sat up in the bed, and I sat beside him, and I was trying to, like, communicate, but I was so happy as well, just to see him. Right. Okay, let's hand this over to Ian. Ian, take it away. Dominic, this is an absolutely beautiful dream you've had. It's actually a very common dream to dream about a, a loved one who's passed on, uh, particularly a parent or a grandparent. It's the 20th most common dream that people have. And as we were saying, any time you dream about someone, Dominic, when you create that character, you're actually dreaming about part of your own self. So there was some quality or qualities that your wife's father had that were very, very special and very important to you. And you're starting to realise how those qualities, uh, how you embody them yourself in waking life, Dominic, how you actually enact those qualities that your wife's father had. And they're coming to life in you. And because his eyes are were jet black in your dream, yeah. your your eyes are how you see things, how you perceive things. And anything to do with black, again, is to do with hidden potential. So you've got the ability, Dominic, to see a lot more than other people do, and maybe even a bit more than you think you've been seeing. And it's using that quality that your wife's father had that you were so close to and the fact that you're holding hands with them and you've got this dialogue going with them and you feel really, really happy, you're just really starting to realise that quality. And because you don't want to let your children see him, you think this is actually, it's you growing up, you're becoming more adult, you're becoming more of a man and you're actually embodying all that love and wisdom that your wife's father embodied. Ian, that's so beautiful. Dominic, wow. what's your reaction? Wow. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, like I say, all day it's been on my mind, all day, and I just didn't know where it come from, but that that actually makes, um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Does it kind of click into your head, Dominic, then? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, I, I, oh. I mean, I just thought it was just a strange dream, and as we all do, I would imagine, when we have dreams like this. But, yeah, wow. Listen. Thank you very much, Ian, yeah. And Dominic, you know, our deepest sympathies to you and, and your wife. It's it's not easy at all, but um, hopefully you're getting through it as best as anybody can. Yeah, thank you very much, yeah. Oh, okay, well, thank you for calling. Yeah, thank um, you, Dominic. Right, so, Ian, I have a couple text messages that have come in. Uh -huh. uh, Lula, she's one of our lovely, lovely texters. Uh, for various reasons, she preferred to text. But she says uh, she has recurring dreams that have included the same elements for years and years. So I can't wait to hear your analysis on this. The narrative changes, but the surroundings always involve an, the ocean on a grand scale. Often, uh, Lula's on a, on a vessel. It's not always a ship or a boat. Sometimes it's a whole city or even a double-decker bus, which is a float. I dream these things over and over again. What is the theme of the ocean? And I love the fact you know exactly where each style of dream is ranked. Yeah, so the ocean is, any time we dream about water, um, we're dreaming about our emotions and feelings. So the, again, we have, because one of the things that, that people ask me, Kath, is, how do you know what all these symbols and metaphors and images mean? Who's in charge of all these? Who makes them up? And the answer is that we all make them up. They all emerge in our language. So we have these phrases in our language like, I'm at a bit of a low ebb. Uh, this feeling just washed over me. I can feel it in my water. I'm feeling all at sea. Yeah, I'm pouring my heart out. So any time we dream about water, then we're dreaming about our emotions and feelings. So Lula is probably uh, quite an emotional person. She might not show it, but she has oceanic feelings and emotions, it's these emotions on a really grand scale. But the fact that she's in a vessel, on a ship or a boat or a, a bus or a city, 
shows that she's she's not all at sea because she's actually navigating her way through these grand emotions. So she's someone who has a tremendous emotional direction and although she has these amazingly profound feelings, then she manages to navigate her way through them and actually use them to propel herself through life. It's so interesting. And again, Ian, you're so right. A, when we hear about other people's dreams, we start thinking of our own. So we're no longer interested in theirs. And and B, there are so many similar themes. And I'm starting to notice in my own head a similarity that it's not just a school field. It's also the school. I, I, I think I've got school issues. Uh, David in Shooters Hill has texted in as well. Again, if you want to text, make sure you do so because we've only got about um, 10 more minutes with Ian. So let's make the most of him while we have his time on 81333. Start your text with the word London or just call us. That'd be the quickest way at this point. 020 722 4000. 020 722 4000. Right. David in Stewart's Hill. His text says, lots of my dreams have lions and tigers in them. Sometimes they're hunting me. Sometimes they're my pet. And I believe this is the most beautiful phrase. What's that about? <laughs> That's a fantastic dream. So uh, lions and tigers, this is a... Uh... Uh, a dream that Rob Bryden shared recently that uh, he often dreams that he's spooning with a lion in bed, that he's lying in bed and this lion's got its um, legs wrapped around him. What does that say about his life? Yes, well, we'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so any time we dream about animals, we're dreaming about our own instincts and impulses because even though we're all human beings and we think, we're higher species. We all live in animal bodies. We're very, very closely connected with animals. And anything to do with a cat, especially a big cat like a lion or a tiger or a panther, is all about autonomy and independence. So when we dream about a lion, uh, we have this phrase, a pride of lions, the king of the beasts, and so on. Anything to do with a lion is about that instinct just to be really confident and take pride in ourselves. When we dream about a tiger, tigers are quite fierce and independent. So when David's dreaming about these lions and tigers maybe hunting him or being with him, then what he's concerned about is that he sometimes feels that he's too confident in waking life or too independent or maybe a bit fierce with people, and he doesn't know quite how to handle those impulses and instincts. But usually dreaming about lions and tigers mean that the dreamer is very creative so he's maybe just a bit shy about showing his creative talents. And sometimes maybe he does have to be quite confident and a bit fierce and just stand up and roar for him own, his own self and show what he can do. OK, so Ian, I now have to ask you, uh -huh. can we control our dreams? Yeah, that's a great question, Kath. So we can't really control them, but we can heavily influence them. Because controlling them would suggest that we know exactly what's happening inside us and we can create all that, but we can influence our dreams kind of like in Inception. And that technique is called lucid dreaming. So in the dream, you become aware that you're dreaming, you're conscious that you're dreaming, and then with a bit of practice, you can actually start to influence your dream so you can go off flying to some lovely tropical island and just do what you want there. So it's a lovely thing to be able to do. And I've got to ask you this as well, another most important thing, because I know quite a few people who suffer from nightmares. And again, I'm, I'm lucky enough to say I only very rarely and occasionally suffer from them. But they're so horrible when you do get them. What do nightmares represent? Obviously, I know there are individual stories in them, but why would you make yourself so scared? Well, the thing about a nightmare, people very often differentiate between dreams and nightmares. They say they're completely different things, but they're exactly the same. All a nightmare is is a dream where you've turned up the volume and made it a bit more vivid and a bit scarier. And the reason that you turn up the volume is because you're not paying attention to a dream in waking life. So a nightmare will start off months previously as a quite an innocent, gentle, quiet dream. And because you don't pay attention to it, then you just start turning up the volume. So it's like me, if I was trying to attack, attract your attention in the street, Kath, I'd be going, Kath, 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 just trying to get your attention. And that's all the nightmare does. And it does that by making it scarier and scarier, just to really get some reaction from you. Okay. 
I really like what you're saying and I'm going to play a quick bit of music that is Halloween related because I keep promising to play these tracks and then we're going to come back to you. If anyone wants to uh, snap up some of Ian's time just before we disappear, you know the number. 020, stay where you are Ian, do not go anywhere. 020 722 4000. More ghost related music now. R.D. Taylor, there's a ghost in my house. You've been very good at this whole Halloween party that we've had. I've loved it. I didn't plan it. It was just an impromptu Halloween party, and I've really enjoyed it. Ian Wallace, our professional dream psychologist and analyst, who's so kindly agreed to join us and interpret dreams on, on our behalf, has, uh, is on the line with us still. Hi, Ian. Hi, Kath. Right. We have Luke in Chelsea for you. Luke, Ian belongs to you for a second. Hi there. How are you? Hi, Luke. How are you? I'm not too bad. It's an honour to speak to you. Thank you very much. So it's good to speak to you as well. Um, Luke, I've had a, uh, I've had this dream um, uh, basically uh, very quickly. It's, it's it's a sort of a sort of like a slideshow. Um, and what happened? It starts off with buildings, familiar buildings, my home, my local street, where buildings start collapsing like demolition sites. Um, also. It's strange because it happens every year, um, and it's followed by a, uh, a a set of people, six six people, we're we're in uh, uh, like the uh, like burkas, um, and they've got a they're they're holding a, uh, a like a you know it's like a funeral with six three people on each side, uh-huh. and they're, and they're rushing uh, through the desert, and it's really scary because they're chanting weird noises. Um, and uh, it, it is a huge echo to it, and it's very real. Mm-hmm. Um, and every time uh, I see that, I, I just literally wake up in uh, in, in sweat. Um, and they're really tall, uh, tall figures, so it suggests that they're not women, but that's not like covered up women. Okay, and and Nishi producers quite rightly reminded me to say, if, if anyone's listening who doesn't know what we mean when you said burka, you mean the full covered dress where you can just see the eyes. Correct. Right, okay. Okay, Ian, take it away. This is a great dream, Luke. So any time you have a dream like this, Luke, that that is quite cinematic in scope, you say it's like a a slideshow, but just that whole large landscape going on and lots of action, it shows you've got a tremendously positive inner life, a very energetic inner life. So any time you're dreaming about a building, it's to do with yourself or people around you, and all these buildings collapsing, there's part of yourself uh, wants to move on from something. And the buildings collapsing, are you just thinking, uh, I don't really have to show up in that sort of way, I don't have to appear that way to other people. And the six people in the burkas going through the desert at quite a fast pace, any time you dream of something that looks like a funeral, a funeral procession, Anything about death is about some sort of transformation inside yourself, Luke, where you want to leave something behind so you can step into the future. And the fact that they're chanting, this is coming from somewhere quite deep inside you, it's quite a a primal thing, and they're tall, so it means that it's something you're really standing up for. So there's some transformation that you're trying to reconnect with inside yourself, Luke, which is about leaving some old stuff behind, just letting things just collapse, just turn to dust, and move on from that. And the fact that six people... Yeah, go for it, Luke. What was that? I should write this down. <laughs> I know, you should. But it's OK, it's all available on the iPlayer. Yeah, just listen back to it, Luke. So, uh, and the fact that six people is a very stable thing. So there's something in your waking life, Luke, where you might be worried about moving on and leaving something behind. It may be something that happens, as you say, at a particular time of year. But the, these people in who are carrying whatever they are in this procession, they're carrying your future look. So you need to start connecting with them and just think about where you can move a bit faster, how you can actually start to irrigate that desert a little bit, start to get some life flowing through it and not being worried about leaving the past behind because that's how you'll step into the future. Luke, very quickly, can I get a reaction to that reading? Uh, well, I, I know I just want to give other people time, but I just want to quickly say thank you very much for that. And secondly, I'd love to get in your party dressed up as Lucifer, nothing on but just red paint. <laughs> <laughs> My word, Luke. My word. Well, do you know what? I, I, I've only one reaction for that. Absolutely. And it's this. Hang on. 
Yes, exactly. You're w- welcome. You're always welcome. Thank you very much, Luke and Chelsea. Oh, the Halloween party's pretty much over. Listen, Ian, thank you so much. If anyone wants to follow you on Twitter, because I'm an addict, how will I find you to follow you? Very complex, Kath. My Twitter handle is Ian Wallace. Nice. Uh, and you, Ian with an extra I in there? And then, you know? Uh, no, just one I. I A N W A L L A C E. And you can also go to my website, ianwallacedreams.com, where there's heaps of information about dreams and dreaming. Brilliant. Well, we've so enjoyed your company. And again, I will make this clear. When I said, you know, you'd have a little go at the dreams, I didn't mean that, you know, I didn't mean to belittle you. I'm going to dream. What will be a dream about social embarrassment? What will I be representing in my dream later, Ian? Uh, you'll be dreaming naked in public. Oh, um, a common dream. Ha- is that OK? I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Maybe I'll be dreaming about being naked in public next to someone with a really lovely Scottish accent, Ian. Thank you very much, Kath. It's a pleasure. Uh, well, hopefully we'll have another chance to do to do this again and have you come and help people's dreams uh, in the in the near future. Is that all right? That would be lovely. That would be a pleasure. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Ian, look after yourself. Thanks so much to everyone who took part in the show.